case four is a 50 year old woman with a periocular mass clinical impression was rule out cyst and if any of you have watched some of my videos online you know that i probably you probably know i like to harp on this again and again that everything is a cyst that i'm using air quotes right now even though you can't see me everything's a cyst until it ends up not being a cyst i have like a box of slides of all sorts of things sarcomas adnexal tumors everything else that was sent in as rule out cyst or rule out lipoma because anything that's a nodule in the deep dermis or the subcutis that doesn't get close to the skin is going to look like a skin colored lump or a bump. And of course, cysts and lipomas are very common. So, you know, most of the time a skin colored lump or bump will be a cyst or a lipoma. The problem is, is all the times that it ends up not being that are the ones I see. So I, I really harp on this because I've seen a fair number of patients that have been misdiagnosed and had delay in care because um, they were told, ah, oh, that's just a cyst. And then after someone biopsies it later, it ends up being something serious. So this periocular mass got shelled out here and kind of scooped out. We don't have any epidermis. Very busy fibrosis here. Got some kind of islands here of pale cells. There's some inflammatory cells mixed in here. Look at that. As we go closer, you can see we've got some plasma cells in here. You can see just a tiny bit of perinuclear Hoff, some, uh, some lymphocytes, maybe even a couple, uh, couple neutrophils here and there, hard to tell. There's collagen in the background. All these pale cells, which are probably histiocytes, usually if you see sheets of pale pink or gray cells in the dermis, it's gonna be histiocytes uh, most of the time. And then also there, uh, there's some cautery artifact here. And where was the other area I wanted to point out? There's also a lot of fibrosis. And you know, after showing you that desmoplastic melanoma, uh, it wouldn't be wrong to see fibrosis like this and some slightly enlarged cells and to have the idea of desmoplastic melanoma at least cross your mind. Uh, but in this case, that's not what the diagnosis is. But I'm not ever opposed to thinking of that when I see fibrotic stuff in the head and neck of people, particularly if they're older and sun damaged. So this one, I suspect that you, many of you may have struggled with, especially because I didn't give you any immunostains. Look, there are lymphoid aggregates here too. Lymphocyte aggregates and plasma cells the key though is in these pale areas we have large histiocytes in here and there's a lot of inflammatory cells scattered in the cytoplasm of these large histiocytes so this is an example of rosei dorfman disease extra uh, extra nodal rosei dorfman disease rosei dorfman disease was first described in lymph nodes um, under the name sinus histiocytosis with massive lymphadenopathy, but now we recognize that it sometimes occurs in the soft tissue of patients. Sometimes those patients have nodal disease. Other times they have only disease in their, their soft tissue. Most of the cases I've seen have been nodules in the subcutis, often on the flank, but they can sometimes occur on the head and neck. And the ones I've seen on the head and neck, um, particularly right in the periocular region, have this unusual tendency to kind of get burnt out. I've seen this in other sites too, but they've basically become very fibrotic and sclerotic. And what you have left over is this very fibrous uh, area with scattered lymphocytes that doesn't look anything like regular Rosei Dorfman. In fact, it looks almost like an inflammatory, so-called inflammatory pseudotumor. Some things that in the past have been called inflammatory pseudotumor are actually now recognized to be inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, a tumor that usually has ALK1 expression. Um, or ALK1 uh, gene uh, fusions. The, um, but other times we have things that are called inflammatory pseudotumors that are actually reactive processes from a variety of different settings. That's kind of what's happening here. I, and in fact, this case I believe was, when I reviewed it, had initially been thought to represent an inflammatory pseudotumor of the orbit. And then uh, a colleague showed me this case and this was long ago, and these areas stood out to me and I thought the cells are large histiocytes here with abundant cytoplasm. And when I did an S100 stain, these all lit up and showed nice and periplesis, which I'll show you some pictures of a closer up view from a different case. Oh, here, look at the big histiocytes there. Those are the Rosei Dorfman histiocytes. So what happens is that sometimes Rosei Dorfman burns out and when it does, it gets very fibrotic and it leaves behind just little pockets like this of more classic Rosei Dorfman areas. But look, I mean, like this is, completely fibrosed here and burnt out. You could definitely think of a lot of other stuff, but here's a little nodule of Rosei Dorfman. Here's another one right here. Here's another one right here. And the rest of the tissue is just fibrosis and inflammation and very few of those Rosei Dorfman histiocytes left. So I feel like that I've seen that happen near the eye and in other sites that Rosei Dorfman can sometimes become very fibrotic and mimic an inflammatory 
pseudotumoral process. All right, let me show you now the pictures for this. Now, this is a more classic example. This was also thought to be a cyst. It was on the flank. And the very characteristic appearance here is that from low power, you see pink and blue. One of my former fellows used to always see that pink and blue, baby. You see these sheets of pink or, or pale gray, if you like, uh, histiocytes. And then you see these blue aggregates that are lymphocytes and plasma cells. That's very characteristic. And most rosy dorpment I've seen is in the subcutis, although occasionally it can involve the dermis also. And when we go in closer... These are the histiocytes I was showing in the last, uh, in our digital slide. Here's a closer up view where you can see really classic example. They have very large nuclei with pale chromatin and central punct, uh, a prominent uh, nucleoli. That's a very characteristic cytologic feature that after you see a handful of cases of Rosei Dorfman, you become, you'll be able to recognize these are big histiocytes. Look, their nucleus is bigger than a whole plasma cell. Plasma cells are present in the majority of cases, maybe all the cases of Rosei Dorfman I've seen. It's almost always there are plasma cells and they often cluster along vessels like this. And if you look closer, that's again the closer view of the the cytology with those big pale um, chromatin that's kind of washed out. And look, there's a plasma cell right here. Here's some little, little maybe lymphocytes in here. There's another plasma cell or two. That actually might be a plasma cell also. Um, and so you may say, well, where's the imperiopolisis? In fact, everything we're seeing here is imperiopolisis. All of this pink stuff is cytoplasm. And imperiopolisis is when inflammatory cells, including plasma cells, lymphocytes, sometimes even red cells occasionally you can see, neutrophils, can sit inside little vacuoles in the cytoplasm of these Rosei Dorfman histiocytes. That's what's happening right here. But it's also happening here, and it's also happening down here. The thing is, is that the classic textbook picture where you see the perfect little vacuole, in real life, you have to really hunt around to find that. But in peripolesis, even on that last, look at this. All, again, all of the stuff here we're seeing is a sea of cytoplasm. So pretty much all of these inflammatory cells here are sitting in the midst of that cytoplasm. They all represent imperipolesis. They just don't look as good as the textbook. Okay, so I think imperipolesis is nice if you see it. But to me, I'm much more interested in seeing histiocytes that look like this and the presence of that inflammatory background and that low power pattern of classic Rosei Dorfman. Imperipolesis, I don't feel like I have to see perfect imperipolesis to make the diagnosis, okay? But if you want to find it, look, that's a classic one. Look, it's like they're like rosetting around around this central nucleus. What a beautiful example, right? And again, look at the plasma cells. They're always hanging out here in Rosei Dorfman. And here's what S100 does. The histiocytes of Rosei Dorfman usually express S100 protein. And it also, it can help you because S100 can help highlight these empty, the vacuoles in the cytoplasm and show you where the inflammatory cells are actually sitting. Like here's a little neutrophil right there, okay? So it can kind of help accentuate the uh, presence of imperipolesis if you're looking for that. And also, again, can help support the diagnosis if you have uncertainty. Um, but a lot of times you can arrive at it, I think, on H&E. The S100 is supportive, though, if you need it. Do remember that other things that are histiocytic can stay with S100, particularly Langerhans cell histiocytosis, another um, disease that does involve the head and neck, usually of young kids. Uh, but I would say that I don't know if I can ever remember a time where I seriously had Rosei Dorfman and Langerhans in the same differential diagnosis together on the same case. They're often taught together in Dermpath because they both are histiocytic disorders that stain with S100. But to me, that's where their similarity ends. They look different cytologically. They're different architecturally. Langerhans cells usually in the papillary dermis and it involves the epidermis. And that's really an unusual presentation and I've, I've for Rosei Dorfman. And in fact, I don't think I've ever seen Rosei Dorfman involve the epidermis. I can't even imagine what that would look like, to be quite honest. Okay. And then sometimes other histiocytic things, you can have some S100 staining in juvenile xanthogranuloma. And occasionally you can see other types of dendritic cells and, and histiocytes that can show some scattered S100 expression. So I would, I would say S100 by itself doesn't prove Rosei Dorfman, but um, you want to have those other features also but it can be helpful in some cases. All right, and uh, do remember that they can burn out like this and get very fibrotic. So a nice example of the very fibrosed Rosei Dorfman disease.